we're gonna continue. Uh, you remember the talk yesterday in the lecture room. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna try to use that table you have in your in your booklet. There is a table uh, which is uh, I think before uh, Rian's talk. You know, and you might recall you might recall that yesterday we were talking about four about four psychological components or so four psychological skills you remember so uh, and those are the ones you have to write down in the left column so you see that we have one two three four you see that okay so if you want the first one the first one you can write down motivation there you know motivation and then what we'll do is we're gonna we're gonna show we're gonna show some drills and we're gonna try to see where we can put them, okay? So the first one would be motivation in this left column. Below that, we're gonna put concentration, or if you want to put focus, that's my concentration. The third one will be emotional control, and the last one on the left will be self-confidence. So if I'm not mistaken, we we can we can show today 12 drills is that correct because we have four mental skills and we've reduced to three game situations okay you see the three columns one is server return the other one is baseline game and the other one is approach and net game okay so are we all on the same page very good very good so and now now I'm going to show you something before. I'll show you something before. Uh, let's see if the idea come, comes across. Across. I need just two two guys just hitting cross court four times. That's for the, uh, at the beginning. Okay. So okay, we're gonna have. We, this is the drill that we've already already always organized. Two guys hitting cross court four times. Okay. And now comes the question. Okay, here we go. So, as we said, uh, we have also four components in tennis. In order to summarize the thing, you know, we have technical component, tactical component, conditioning, and, and mental. So, this drill, this drill, when we, when we put together a drill, usually we have one goal, even though there are other goals. But which, which would you say is the main goal of these four? Technical, tactical, psychological, or physical? Which is the main goal of this drill? Oh. Tactical? Psychological? Anyone technical? Technical? No one physical? Okay. Careful with that one. Okay, look, it's very important. When, when do we have a tactical drill? What is the difference between a technical and tactical drill? It's, it's just, two, just two words, just two words. We have a tactical drill when there is decision making. That's it. So the question is, is there decision making here? No. No, so this is not a tactical drill. That's it. Huh? What are these guys doing? Are they moving much? No. No. Well, so really, my main goal here is not physical. Okay, because, well, is there any physical component here? Yes, but look, it's, it's, not, it's not my main goal. We've seen this morning some physical things, so this is, okay. So, and what about mental? Yeah, it could be, it could be, we'll see. But really, they are hitting cross court forehands. This is a technical drill, that's it. So how can I, oh, this is my main goal is a technical drill. How can I progress to a tactical drill? Decision making. How do I introduce decision making? Just two, day, two ways, depending on who takes the decision. Who can take the decision? Hold on a second. There are, there are only two parts here that can take the decision. One is what? The coach. I can say, okay, now you rally, okay, you rally. In the third ball, you go down the line and you play out the point, okay? 
Who's taking the decision? Let's go. Why? Because I'm paid. I take the decision. The other decision will be, uh, you guys, you keep doing that, I go, I go to the bar. That's another decision, but that is not a tactical thing. That's another thing. Okay, so I am taking the decision here. But it, so is this more tactical than before, yes or no? Yes, 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 because now there is a decision. But can be more tactical, yes or no? Who takes the decision then? The players. So that is the second way of taking the decision. So every time you see a drill, if there is no decision, it's not tactical. If there is decision, then you have to ask yourself, who is taking the decision? If the coach is taking the decision, the coach is what? You know, this is a type of methodology. I tell you what you have to do. Okay, command style, yes, commander. Okay? And if I allow the guys to take the decision, then, okay, there is a guided discovery, what we were saying the other day. So that is the point I wanted to make. So all drills have comp components. This has a mental component, has, but all the drills have like a, the, the, main, the main goal. In this case, it was, we started with a technical goal and we've moved it to a what? To a tactical goal. So things are not either or, it's a continuum. You know a continuum is a line and you can progress the line depending on the decisions you make, okay? Very good, hold it there, thank you very much. Now, we're gonna start with this psychology thing and we're gonna start with the first, with the first drill with motivation. So the, your first column you have there. And in that column, if you want, you have to write two things. One is the strategy we are using, the strategy we, that we are using to improve that. And the second is the drill itself. So let's say that we have two guys there and one guy there, very good. And this is what we're gonna do now. Okay, you, you're gonna serve, okay? You're gonna serve, you're gonna return, very good. Where's the, the key is here, okay. So this is the thing, uh, every time you serve, you're gonna say where you're gonna serve. Eh? Wide, body, T. Every time you return, you're gonna say where you're gonna return. Whatever you want. The cross court down the line, it doesn't matter. And you do the same, okay? Okay, so what is, this is the drill. If, and then I go to the bar. The player, you, you yeah, you go, come on, you start, you say. You, you, the, the guys have to do something also. So they speak. No, you say that. No, what are you saying? Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, you go, say T, you say what? Very good. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, come on. So these guys are working, you know, and I'm here uh, speaking to you and things like that. And, and then, what is the strategy? What is the method I am using? Why? No, why? Why not? I don't, why, yes. <laughs> what is the method I am using? How do we call this? We call this goal setting. Who is setting the goal? Again, I could set the goal or they could set the goal. Goal setting is the strategy. Every time you use goal setting, what are you working? Motivation. Why? Because goal setting is the number one strategy to work motivation. So, on top of that box, goal setting, you describe the drill. They, come on, come on, come on. We have to work a little bit. Okay, so they, they speak, uh, they speak, and I didn't, did you say something or not? Okay, very good. So, that's, I, I, I only want to check if they set a goal. Why? Because when there is a match, what is gonna happen? What is gonna happen? When there is a match, before they serve, they'll have a plan. And before he returns, they have, they'll, he'll have a plan. The worst plan is no plan. At least have a plan. Maybe you don't, you don't get it, but at least have a plan. I can, I can introduce other things to keep them motivated, which is scoring, scoring. There are two types of scoring here. The scoring is, you say, you say where you're gonna serve, and if you hit the ball where you want it, you get the one point, okay? Then, if you win the point, you get two points. You get me? So it's like, he checks, it's a self-check, he checks 
if he's doing what he was supposed to do. And the same with him. He says body, if he hits down the line, then it's zero. But if he hits the return in, it's one point for him, okay? So they have a scoring system. Huh? One scores, one system which is the result of the point, and the other system is if matches to what they were saying. You get me? Okay, so that's that. And in which situation are we working? Serve and return of serve, okay? So the good thing about this is that can you adapt this to the other two game situations, baseline and approaching the net? Yes, you can. Every time you, you use the goal setting, you know, you, you, you just, you can do this. Okay. Okay, hold it. Now we go to the, to the second, uh, in motivation, the second game situation. How can, how can I work motivation from the baseline? One example, another strategy. Look, another strategy to work on motivation is 100% effort, 100% effort. When you, when you put all the effort in something, means that or you are motivated or you are done, you know? And I'm gonna show you one drill, which is a two against one drill. And this is a, I don't know if I've shown this already. It's a Ferrero drill. Uh, uh, okay, one here, one guy here. Okay, again. It's very important that most of our drills are realistic. They happen in the match. But I have a theory. For instance, sometimes, sometimes, in order to recreate the match situation, you have to be, or you have to go a little bit further. Uh, I, I remember listening to Djokovic in an interview. He was saying, look, you know, match, my practice has to be tougher than a match. Because if not, it's not enough. Okay? So this is the type of drill, two against one. And we're gonna do it, you know, like, uh, so we start, <clears throat> we start, uh, you, you're gonna play cross court, and you guys, you play down the line, okay? But there is only one difference. The difference is that you always play into the single court, okay? And you guys, you always play into the trim lines. <laughs> so the ball, your, 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 your shots have to go to the corridor. Okay, but you play, you play always cross court, always cross court. You guys, you play down the line. Okay, L just let's have a look. You, 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 you picture a little bit the drill. Okay, here we go. Now you go down the line. That's very good. Okay, keep keep the ball yeah, all the time. If the ball goes out, you hit it back. It doesn't matter. Okay, that's it. Okay, now down the line. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It has to go to the to the to the to, not to the other side. Eh? Have to go. In. Okay, here we go. If not, you directly kill the guy. Okay, that's it. Okay, you are, your, you, are, you are his friend, eh? Okay? Very good. Okay, hold it there, hold it there. So what happens here? That guy is running like a chicken. You know? Boom, 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 boom. That's how it works. That's how it works. Can it be tougher? Yes, how? Well, they, they play cross court. Can it be much tougher? If they play cross court and he plays down the line, it's much tougher. Is this a realistic drill, yes or no? No. Because when the ball bounces here, it's out. <laughs> so it's not realistic. The problem is that I asked the coach, because you know the other thing he does is the following. Ferrer's coach is here, and let's say that the player is there, Ferrer is there, and the key here is that this guy really runs, 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 and no mistakes. And if he makes a mistake, these other guys, they hit the ball back. So this guy is running, 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 and when the guy is gone, gone, gone means <sighs> gone. Then the coach is here and fits a very easy ball to the tee. You know, one ball like that, boom, very easy. So this guy is tired, 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 and has to win the ball. And then push off. Obviously you do this with very good players, but then I ask the guy, why are you doing this thing of the lines? And he said, look, you know, I know that in the drill, if the ball bounces here, it's good. But in real life, if the ball bounces here, it's, it's out. But then, in the real life, when, when the player is running like a chicken from one side to another side, if the ball bounces here, he'll say, oh, well, I'm, used, I'm used to hit the ball when the balls bounce here. So this, for me, is quite easy. <laughs> so this is, a, this is a, a reason of the practice is tougher than the match. It's not a realistic drill. It's not a tactical drill. 
obviously it's not a technical drill. It's a psychological drill, and what else is that? Apart from psychology, what are we working here? What is he working? Physically. And in, in conditioning, what he's working is what? Endurance. Okay? So those are the things that sometimes you, you, you cannot tell him, oh, for God's sake, what is your grip in that ball? No, we cannot ask about the grip now. Oh, oh, very bad decision. Which decision? My decision is to run like a chicken. That's the only decision I have. And also I'm telling the guy, you go cross court of you. I am taking the decision. So it's not a tactical thing. The important thing is that you guys from outside, you know what is going on here. I mean, oh, this guy is doing this because of this, this, and this. And then you might agree or not. But that what you do here has a reason, has a reason as a cause. In this case, we this guy was using this drill as a 100% effort drill. Usually at the end of the session, and then this guy would go like say, thank you very much. Okay? So so those are those are the, the things that, that sometimes and again this is a drill that that can also be used as a conditioning drill. Okay? So this would be the second example. Uh, the strategy would be 100% effort and would be motivation. And the third example, so we go on the right, we're gonna do something on, uh, on uh, uh, um, approach of, of net, net gain, okay, motivation. And the strategy here would be also one strategy which is very important to motivate players, which is competition, competition. Competition drives motivation. Every time you set up a competition, what you are doing, you are trying to motivate your players. That's what you are doing. And this is again a drill that Ferrero and Ferreira, these guys, they use a lot. Two against one drill, but you go to, to back, and you guys, you are at the left. Come in. Okay, this is how it works. Two against, again, again, it's not a realistic drill. It's not a realistic drill, but it's a drill that what we try to do is try to be very, very competitive. And these guys, they, they do it a lot. They do it a lot. And this is how it, how it works. The way it works is we are, we're gonna have, we're gonna start first with two and then we go one, one, one against one. You feed the ball and then, one thing that when I go to these academies, I see a lot of these guys do and, and a lot of people ask, why, why are these guys so consistent? Because all the rally drills, they start the same. They start, first, we need to rally four to eight balls. When we hit four to eight balls, then we open the point. You understand? It's not that, with one ball and then we go. Even the top guys, one, two, three, four, and then we play the point. And this is what we're gonna do. One, two, three, four, and then we play the point. And the first, you're, you're, obviously you're gonna try to pass them, you're gonna try to pass them, your first passing shot is gonna be down the line. Always down the line. Singles down the line. The, the, fir the first volley, whoever takes it, always down the line. And then we play out the point, okay? So that's what, how we want to work. And the first four balls, nice balls, nice balls, because we want to rally. One, two, three, four, now down the line, and we go. Down the line, the ball, and then we play the point. Okay, that's it, come on. Very good, okay, now we play, we play it again. Very simple, very simple. You can do it two against one, or one against one, so you come out, and then you do two guys, you play, feed the first one, eh? and then, Always the rule can be first down the line. So you change the rules the, the way you want, okay? And then what they do all the time, all the time, they compete. They compete all the time. They count points. They count points. One to zero, two zero. For instance, this girl, Sara Errani, that coach was giving us a talk the other day. This, he, he was telling us, look, this girl, even the, even the warm up is competition. Because they are so competitive that even the warm-up is competition. So as much as you can, in every single drill you put, points. Points for nothing. Not for a Coke or an airplane or a trip to, no, no, no. Points for nothing. Because the guys, are one, two, 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 three, two, four, two. And again, the rules here, the rules can be, I start taking the decisions, it could be the first passing shot down the line, the first ball uh, down the line, then passing towards cross-court, cross-court, cross-court down the line, you start. Or, 
first passing shot down the line, the volley here, open. Okay? First passing shot, open. So you decide the rules you put. The more rules you put, the closer the deal will be, the less decision making. The next step, the last step, they decide. You guys, you decide. If he wants to go down the line, he goes, if he wants to go cross court, that's it. But by using the methodology of points, that is how we, at least we, we try to improve in motivation, okay? Very good. Let's move to the, to the second skill, which is concentration. And we go to the serve, okay? Serve and return. And this drill, you've done it many times. Two guys serving, one guy returning, you put cones. Every time you put cones, you are working on concentration. And what can you do with the cones? You can have different colors for the cones. Try to put them not too many, not, not, not too difficult. And what they do is they call up the cones, colors, we put targets for them, targets for the for the for the play for the players who are receiving. We can have four players in one court. It doesn't matter. You know? Different types of returns. We decide. The important thing is that they have to call up the return. Okay? And they have to just so every time, okay, now you go, you decide one, one. Every time we put cones, boom. Concentration, okay? Opa. Another drill that I've seen with, with very good players, serving to a serving series of, of shots, of serves. Eh? For instance, one second. Let's, let's, now you're gonna, you're gonna serve three serves, okay? Three serves. And then what he does is he serves, which you can't serve one, one, one. That means one open, one body, one T. One, zero, two. Three, zero, zero. So you decide what you want, okay? But then you decide that for yourself, for yourself, okay? And then you do the same. Wide body, cross court body down the line. So they have serious. And why do we do that? Because again, what we want is that they have also they focus on a plan before they serve. They focus on a plan before they serve. So every time you have a cone, you are working on that, on, on concentration, okay? And then for the other guy is to also figure out, okay, what is this guy doing? And what is this guy doing, okay? So, and then we rotate, so every time we have that, we, you know, that's, that's the, the, the idea. Another, another strategy we can, we can use, and, and now we're gonna move to baseline game, with baseline game, because with baseline game, obviously we can have cones or whatever for concentration, is what we call constraints. Constraints which are limitations, limitations. And what we want, could you please take them, take the, the cones, yes. What we want is that when they when they rally, eh, and now an underarm, an underarm uh, serve, and you rally, the only thing here is that every ball has to be different to the previous one. Yes. So if you play top spin forehand, the next one has to be something else. But it cannot be top spin forehand. If you play down the line, the next one cross court. So you play completely different. So is this a technical drill? No. Is it tactical? No, because the one that's is taking the decision is myself. What is physical? Not much. But what I want is that they are focused on the different things they are doing. You know? Is it realistic? No. But I am putting what we call a limitation, a constraint. In order, what for? Well, to make their life a little bit more complicated, number one, and second, to value the importance of being focused on what they are doing, you know? being focused on what they are doing. Okay, so the idea here is that you play a different stroke every time. 
And the strategy that we call is this call of limitations. Sometimes we call it constraints. Huh? So it's just one one way, and you can do it only with cross court or with forehands or with backhands the, the way you want. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Huh? Sorry, no worries. Okay. So this would be one example of of a drill uh, for a baseline game that you can. Also, another another example that you can do. I, I'm sure you've seen that many times that you can do with with kids, and depending with the kids is that they play with two balls at the same time. I'm sure this. Uh, so when we say one, two, three, go, they play with two balls at the same time, and we do it as a cooperation drill. Okay? We do it as a cooperation drill. Is this realistic? Obviously not. Yeah, tennis has improved, but not so much, you know? <laughs> but again, why are we doing that? Well, we're doing that because eh, sometimes you need to react faster, and the only way of doing that, you know, is doing... Are we working on tactics here? No. Techniques? No. Conditioning? No. This is an attentional drill. This is an attentional drill, a concentration drill, okay? What else can we do? You know, how many times you've done this thing that the players are running before they have to turn? I don't know if Jeff did it the other day. So you have a lot of variation. For instance, let me show you one that, um, yeah. Let me show you one that, that I also, there's a, one coach friend of mine, he used. Okay, this is how it works. Uh, you guys, you're gonna rally now, uh, here. You go to the net. We move to the net position now, and we are working again on uh, concentration. And and here the strategy we're gonna use is reaction time. Okay, reaction time. So you guys, you you rally. So it's a cooperation drill. Eh? Very nice. Hit the ball back. Very nice. And then. So you have to be consistent here. Eh? So you are not competing. You are. And then from, from now on, what I'll do is I'll feed you one ball. And then what you have to do is you have to volley it, but just play it you know, whatever you want. You have to keep the ball in play. That, that ball is the important one. My ball, the only thing you have to do is you just volley it and that's it, okay? Here we go, go on. Yeah, you feed, you feed and you, you volley it nicely. Yes, that's it. Very good. Well, if he's the one who should not, uh, okay. Come in, come in, come in. Okay, so we need yeah, a solid. Uh, come on, right? That's it. There you go. Go! Okay, come in, come in. Oh, sorry. Are you good? Okay. No, 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 no. Okay, you, fo you forget about his volley. You, you, keep, the, you, you keep the other ball. Come in. Yeah, yeah, forget about his ball, you keep the, that ball. Okay, obviously this is not a realistic deal, you know? But this is very good to improve the concentration and the reaction in the body. We can't even make it more difficult what he was doing. It's even a higher, <laughs> higher level. We can also even swap the guys here if we want. We can even swap the guys there if we want. But I think the, the key the key guy who is working is this guy. And this is drill is very good for this is reaction in the volleys. But again, this is not a tactical drill. It's not, not much decision. It's not a technical drill. Well, maybe if you want a little bit of hand, you are working there. Conditioning, really not much. We are working mostly on concentration, attention. Reaction. That's what we're working on. You know? So it's just taking one drill and then just putting it putting it in the right place according to our goals. To our goals. Okay? So that, that is the that is the the main the main aspect. The main aspect that we are we are we are working. Okay. So now we move and the next uh, the next one we've said is emotional control. Okay? Emotional control in the situation of serve and, and return of serve. And in this case, with emotional control, the strategy uh, to improve emotional control, uh, one of the best strategies is breathing. You know, use the use of your breath 
to improve emotional control. So now we're gonna have some guys serving here and you, you can go there to return. And what we want is to know exactly the players know to use the two types of breathing. One is what we call the deep breathing that helps you to relax. And the other one is the short breathing, brisk one that helps you to activate. That's what the players need to know. So depends, depend, depending on how they feel, if they feel you know, overactivated or they feel underactivated, under arousal, then they'll use one or another. But what the coach wants is that before, before serving or before returning, I, I want to see a clear use of the breathing. So if before serving, you think you have to take two or three deep breaths, you go and do that. And before the return, the same, you do that. If you think that you have to, to activate, you do that. You decide, I'm not gonna tell you what to do, you are the best one who knows, but that's what, it, but, but what I want to see. I want to see before serving and before returning, that. Huh? Okay, so you decide what you want to do. Okay, I've seen him, eh? apart from the serve, I've seen he's done it. Who can also control the guy who is behind? The player, the other player can control if the, play, if the player did or not. And then again, we give points if he did the task and how was the serve. Always points, always points. Did you do the task? Yes, one point. The serve was out, then zero, you get one point. The serve was in, you get two points. Okay, so that is very simple because I'm sure you do this drill hundreds of times, but maybe the kids, they just serve, you know, they, they, they serve, and that's it. And also, in, in serve and, and return, the return of serve is the same. We want the player to... Why? Because later, when they are in the match, hopefully, if we tell them, breathe from outside, they say, what? No, you've already practiced that. Oh, breathe, yeah, yeah, I forgot. Then you breathe. And um, you can do it, you know, during the pra normal practice session. Because if you do a serving drill, serve and return drill, and, 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 and by the way, another thing which I think is important that we make a lot of mistakes is that, especially, for instance, I, I see in Spain, a lot of coaches working only on the serve in a, an isolated way. They work on the serve, and there's no one returning there. In my opinion, when you do that, the quality of the drill goes down immediately. Why? Because they don't care about putting the ball in or out. There's no one waiting there. If there's someone there, they do care a little bit. So sometimes they don't, but usually, you know. So I think it's very important, this thing that as much as you can, practice serve and return together. As much as you can. Except, obviously, if you are working on technique. Maybe if you're working on technique, maybe, then you have to practice serve in isolation or return in isolation. But for instance, in psychology, it's very good. You can you can, you can do it and there's no need for you to tell them, okay, now we're gonna work on mental training. Mental training, mental training. No, okay, now we're gonna work on the serve. The only thing you guys, uh, what I want is that, you know, do you usually breathe before the serve? Well, you have to, no? Because if not, you, you, you die. So just breathe a little bit, breathe with a little bit, you know? Okay, so they are cautious that at least we've practiced that. We've practiced uh, emotional control strategy, which is breathing. Okay, that's it. So very, kind of a, very simple, and we can do it always. Yes, let's grab some more. Okay, let's move on to another, another uh, emotional control strategy. Okay, in, uh, in the baseline game, eh? baseline game. And this one is relaxation. Okay, relaxation. And usually, usually one thing we can uh, we can do is uh, try to help players learn how to relax in between points after a rally. And we need to help them understand when they are tense. You know when they are tense and one drill that i'm sure i'm sure you've seen this this drill you know uh, which can be a two on one or one on one it doesn't matter is this drill of the the intensity of the rally okay the intense how 
how hard you can hit the ball with control. So the deal is that you just, you guys, you rally from the baseline, you know, and you rally, you start with a very slow pace, like, as if you were hitting a 10K an hour, you know? This is a drill that uh, Jim Lawyer used to do a lot. So 10K an hour, so the players are cautious of, of the level, of the level of energy uh, they hit. And then, okay, and with no mistakes. Now let's, let's just hit with a little bit more pace. Now without stopping, 10K, now let's go to 20K an hour. Like a little bit more pace, a little bit more speed in the strokes, you know, okay. No mistakes, can we go 40? Can we go 50? Oopa. Okay, so that's, so the players know eventually how, how hard they can hit the ball, what is their maximum racket speed, and then they can go up or down the way they want. So they know the energy levels they are putting uh, in, the, in, the, in the stroke. Uh, that, is, that is very, very important. And at the same time, and at the same time, when they make a mistake, when they make a mistake, what we try to tell them is that they need to find a muscular relaxation study that usually is like relaxing the muscles or tensing and relaxing, you know? And sometimes I see young kids that they've learned that. They make a mistake and then immediately they, you know, they just change the, the racket from their hand, you know, and they, and I like that. Why do you say this guy, is, this guy, he knows, he knows, he knows his stuff. There are a lot, a lot of pro players that also do that. You know, do that and then immediately, or players who play 200 backhand. Sometimes it becomes as one of one of the other strategy, a ritual, a routine. That you eventually start telling the guys that they have to do that, they must do that, and eventually it becomes automatic. So if you do this drill that gradually they hit, 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 and then when they make a lot of mistakes, they go down. They go go back, go back, go back. And then maybe they both agree that their speed is 40K an hour. Or one can hit a 40K and the other one can hit a 30. It doesn't matter. The important thing is no mistakes. And when you make a mistake, okay. You don't need to tell them, oh, this is muscular relaxation. Let me ask you about Mr. Jack Jacobson and things like that. No, because then the guys are gone. Oh, there's another one with shoes, with, with eyes and, you know, and heat. No, no, no. It's just relax your muscles. That's it. Okay? Very simple, very simple, but at least they do something. Okay? What about the neck? Again, we can also use some emotional control strategies, and this is uh, related also. It's a little bit similar to what we were seeing here before, but it's also sometimes that that we see that happens in a match. And sometimes players, you know, they have a little bit of, of, of problems and it's related to also this. The previous one was the intensity of the shot. This one is about the energy you put. So controlling the energy in the stroke would be the strategy. And this is how, how, it, how it works. Uh, you're gonna be there in, in, the, in the, a little bit further. Okay, and this is what we're gonna do. You just do guys, you just pick up some more. So you're gonna hit one, you're gonna hit three balls, okay? I'm gonna feed you one dry volley, then gonna be one deep volley, and one drop shot volley, okay? Three ones. What I want him is to learn to put different energy in the stroke, okay? Different energy. So one dry volley, you go for it, okay? One deep volley, and one drop shot, okay? That's it, again. And also what I'll do is, I can do different things with my feeding. I can feed at the same speed. One, all of them the same, all of them the same. So he's the one who has to change. Eh? Or I can feed different, a different speed. Okay, sometimes fast and then 
So he has to know how much energy he puts in the stroke. And for me, that is very important because sometimes when, for instance, when you are playing, when you are playing here, the transition game, the first ball has to be like you touch and the second you have to finish the point or the opposite. The first ball can be like a winner and then the second one can be like a drop shot. So you need here one type of energy in the stroke and there you need another type of energy. And that happens in, in seconds, in seconds. So you need to control your energy. And in some way you are controlling also your emotions there, okay? So that is why doing this type of drills in which, because most juniors, for instance, they try, they put the same, ah, 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 they don't care. They put the same energy in every single, no, in this one, it's just, about just touching the balls nicely. And especially with kids that, for instance, use very extreme grips, that also helps to develop the touch, the hand, you know? And I've seen that with a lot of very good players, players like Ferrer and these guys, that at the beginning they were not very good at the net, and now they gradually they are becoming much better at the net. Why? Because they do this type of, you know, they hit a winner and then the next one two. So it's completely different energy in the stroke you put, you know, completely different. Completely different stroke, but also completely different amount of energy which is in the stroke. And that is, that is also very important. In this case would be a drill which is very, is, is it a tactical drill? No. Condition? No. It's related more with a technical element, you know, because it's related. So it would be mental slash technical. So all the, all the drills have this kind of combination. And depend, depends on you. Which are your goals? Then you decide which combination you want, you want to use, okay? And again, this can be done in the baseline, can, whenever you want, okay? Very good. So let's move now on to the, the last, uh, the last uh, mental skill, which is self-confidence. Self-confidence, and we're gonna do it with serve and return, that we have the guys there, the server and returners, okay? And you return there. And one strategy, one of the most one of the strongest strategies for self-confidence is post positive self-talk. What is self-talk? Self-talk is a word that you want to use that will give you confidence when you sell. I don't know if you remember what, what Jeff Quinlan was saying the other day about this guy Wayne Arthurs that the guy was saying up and in or something like that. Or one, two, okay, what is one, two? One, two, one, two, one, two is nothing. But for the guy, one, two mean, meant everything. It's the same. Do you have one word? The word cannot be, oh, no double fault. No, that, 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 that has to be positive. Eh? Has to be a positive word. So a positive word that you might use on the serve and on the return, a positive word that is not given to you by your coach or by anyone else, a positive word that you have found, you've created, and you want to say, you want to pronounce before you execute the shot. And the way it works is that before you have to say it in loud voice, and then your partner there, the other player, usually we might have another one returning, or the coach, we can listen. And then later, obviously in the match, you don't want to say, I'm going to kill you. And then you said, no. no. I have to say some, something for, for you. So come on, come on. Or whatever. You decide whatever you want to do, and then you say it internally. But at the beginning, you just, you know, you, 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 you say it loud. So which is your, your word? Explode. Very good. And what about yours? Energy. In? Energy. Energy. Oh, very good. Usually people... Sometimes use as shorter words, in, up, move, you know, but explode energy, very good. Okay, no, so you have to say that. Okay. And every single time they have to say that. So that is what we want. 
That is what we want. That they say something and then in the match, they think that word. They think the word. Because at the end of the day, one thing that helps you also to be self, very self-confident is if you have things to do. If you have, which are, if you have habits, positive habits, that is going to help you to improve your self-confidence because then you have things to do. You know. That is why when you are in a plane or things like that, they explain to you the emergency, emergency exit and everything. Nobody, nobody, you know, pays attention, but they and, and in emergency situation, these are very clear. This is what you must do. And tennis is an emergency situation. So you, you it's very clear what you have to do. And one way is giving instructions to yourself, instructions which are positive to yourself. Okay? Very good. Let's move on to the baseline game. Another strategy, another strategy to improve self-confidence in the baseline game is what we call the self-evaluation. Self-evaluation. Usually, we as coaches, what we do is we evaluate our players. You know, for instance, something what we do, we may have one basket, I'm gonna feed him. What, what I, what we do a lot, this is what we do a lot, okay? Uh, which is, which is your, which is your best shot? Backhand. Backhand, very good. So I'm gonna evaluate you, eh, from zero to five. Okay, here we go. 0 0.5. 0 0.7. So we are like that, no? You, 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 you nail the guy, usually. Or, or sometimes you are the other way around. Oh, six. You know? Oh, someone is calling. Hold on. No. So, but what about doing this? Now you're going to evaluate yourself. Out of five. five. You evaluate yourself, okay? So what? Five. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Moses. Okay, so very good. So he, you know, the guy evaluates himself. Eh? And now, okay, now when he said five, now I'm going to feed him and I'm going to see what? If he's consistent in his evaluation. Okay? Three. He's consistent. Yeah, it, it wasn't really very clean. So, because uh, five, now he says again five, say, what, what is going on here? You know? So that is with, but also you can do it with 10 year olds, with 12 year olds, because then they start to think about, about what is for them important in a stroke. Okay? So that is very important. And then the third thing you can do, the third thing you can do is, he evaluates himself, I evaluate him, okay? Four, you, three. For me, four, for him, three. Okay, here we go. Three. The guy is tough. But I like that. Okay, here we go. Two, two, okay. Anyway, that is the thing, okay? So, also we can have some of the guys evaluating. Why? Because it's important that they know, they know how they, they learn to perceive themselves. Because then they know, they know what they need to be self-confident. Obviously, self-confidence is five all the time. Five, 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 five. And another important thing in self-confidence is that it goes up and down. You know, you, 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 you don't know. How are you? I don't know. That happens. And also, you, you should know what to do to gain self-confidence. And that is the last drill we're going to do about um, be, uh, transition game, baseline game. The last strategy to, win self, self, to get self-confidence is to work on your strengths. When you work on your on your strengths, is the best way of winning self-confidence. That is why, for instance, have my friend who works a lot with with girls that they he he does this drill a lot. Uh, you go, uh, go to the team. He he does this drill a lot, especially the last drill of the session, usually with girls a lot. And it's this drill: just drive volley, five drive volleys. Okay, nail them. Okay, come on, go. 
Yes. Another one. Go. Yes. Another one. Go. Okay. Another one. Come on. Go. Okay. Last drill. Five drills. Bah, 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 bah. And they go. So, if they miss, if they miss, another one. Miss, another one. Another one. Until they... You work on their strengths. For instance, and this is an example of mid-core game, but you can do it, you know? And again, it's realistic, no? Are we working technique? No. Tactic? No, no, no. It's, what are we working? Confidence. Oh, they go out the court. How are you? Very good. <laughs> How you feel? Oh, very good. But that's what you want. That's what you want. Well, you want also them to be realistic, no? But being realistic is what you get with the previous one, because they have to be realistic when they assess themselves. You know? So this is more or less the thing, that for every single mental skill that again we've, we've reduced them, we've, we've made a reduction of the mental skills needed for tennis and we ended up saying that there are four. You remember motivation, concentration, emotional control, and self-confidence. You can create drills or adapt drills for the different game situations. Again, we've reduced them to three to make, you know, to make the thing easier. And you don't need to reinvent the wheel because you are using most of the drills and what you have to do is remember a little bit the strategies, those we've said. Where the, for instance, in self-confidence, we've said uh, the scoring thing, no? We've said the self-talk. We've said the, um, the work in your strengths. And these three strategies can be, you, you can use them in every single game situation. So it's up to you now to try to create or adapt the drills that you, you know in order to just to work this mental skills in these game situations, but mostly without the players knowing exactly, oh, we are doing mental training. There's no need. If you want to say it's okay, but there's no need. The important thing is that you know exactly the goal and the players know, okay, now I'm learning to relax, you know, or, or now I'm learning. And it has to be pretty simple because it's, if it's not simple, if it's not something that they are usually used to do with slight changes, then they don't want to do it. And there are, there are other ways. For instance, we haven't mentioned what you can do uh, when there's no game situation. For instance, during the changeovers. During the changeovers, you can also help the players to work on their emotional control by using relaxation techniques or using you know, drinking and toweling off to work on their motivation to work on their emotional control, their self-confidence by analyzing the match, the, the, previous, the previous game. So there are a lot of things that you can do, not changing too much what you are doing. And I think that is the challenge, and that is our task as coaches, to be creative, to adapt things, and try to, to help the players as much as possible, especially in this area of, of mental training that we know that is very important, but maybe we don't practice or we don't work as much as we should. Please, a big hand to the players. Thank you very much, and thank you to you. Thank you.